Welcome, Louise. Welcome to the New Dawn podcast. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I can't wait to get into this topic with you. Could you introduce yourself and tell everyone who's watching and listening who you are and what you do? Yes, thanks very much, Dawn. Thanks for inviting me along. So I'm Louise Simpson. I run Louise Simpson Coaching, which I work as a professional organiser and coach. So basically what I do is help people make the most of their homes and their time. Um, but with looking at the kind of emotional as well as the practical changes that are needed, it's very much a two-pronged approach. Um, the topic that I am really focusing on at the moment is how do we find ways, healthy ways to move from feeling helpless and hopeless into feeling stronger and more empowered. Um, First of all, can you describe a little bit what that means to you? Um, just off the cuff, uh, tell me, does that is that a topic that resonates with you and do you see it with your clients too? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, being in that place where you can honestly see yourself and feel able to be yourself and express yourself in a way that is, you can only do when you feel empowered, where you're not second guessing yourself, where you're not overthinking everything and being that kind of inner critic to the extent where you almost stop yourself doing things and I see that all the time with clients that you know home is our basic need you know if you look at our hierarchy of needs home safety security is right there it's one of the kind of main things and when that isn't there and not giving that level of support it can throw everything out of whack so for me what I always talk about with clients is starting at home should be that safe place that place where when we put the key in the door and we open the door we let out a sigh of relief not taking in the sharp intake of breath going oh my goodness what's waiting for me so giving you that ability for home to be that safe place to allow you to then be who you are without that kind of holding you down but acting as a support instead I'm actually quite emotional you mentioning that uh, because uh, in fact I was only thinking about that yesterday and how I spent so much of my time so much of my life in places in houses living with people where I felt unsafe and I didn't know how to name that mm -hmm. uh, whether that was uh, the people or the place like I've lived in locations that felt unsafe I've lived with people who absolutely I felt unsafe with but didn't know that that was what I was experiencing and now in the last eight years where I've had taken control over my home space it has become not only a place where I feel so peaceful and it's surrounded by loads of plants and as you can see loads of color and my cat and you know all of those things but it's also a place where my nervous system relaxes my breath relaxes and when you're dealing with trauma or when you're dealing with anxiety or anything that's going on in your life you need a place to be able to decompress yep. don't you yeah so is that a theme that you see with your clients that they struggle to create that for themselves? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, not only with clients, but friends and myself, life just seems busier than ever. We're trying to cram more things in, you know, as a parent, our children, we're trying to give them all those opportunities that we never did. And, you know, all of that kind of wonderful stuff. But equally, that busyness and that overwhelm adds to that feeling of, you know, home is yet another place that then adds to that rather than supporting it. So for me, I always go back to, you know, a lot of the time when people first contact me and say, oh, I think I need your help. I should be able to do this. You know, everybody else seems to be able to do it. Everybody else has got the perfect home, the perfect life. And you all know as well, Dawn, from the people that you've worked with, there is no such thing as perfection. You know, it's a perception of what we see and what people share with us. So that those two words, the should and the perfection, are often for me what people start with. And what I take them back to is 
what is it that's really important to you about your home? How do you want to feel in it? So we start with looking at how do you currently feel in each room of your house? Because, you know, different parts of our homes should do different things for us. You know, our bedroom should be our sanctuary, our sensual place. If we're parents, it should definitely be our adult space, not surrounded with toys and, you know, family stuff, because that allows us to be ourselves and, you know, have the relationships and the intimacy that we want. Um, but other areas too perform different functions. And especially over the last few years, parts of our homes have had to be multiple, multiple, sorry, multi-use, you know, people working from home more. We had an element of the homeschooling thrown in and all of that kind of has messed with people's homes really you know it's made it so busy in itself as well as life being busy that people have forgotten how they feel and it's just a transactional kind of you know the phrase ships that pass in the night it's kind of like the house is just there and actually mm -hmm. when you get people to take a breath and at the very start of the first session just take a breath to go well how is it that I really feel and how do I want to feel it's almost by giving them that permission that they then start to see what impact their home is having on their life and how it could be so much better. Uh, I mean, th this is really resonating with me. Uh, it's been my home has been such a massive part of my healing journey to be intentional with it. What do I want this space to be? Where do I want that item to be? Where you know, really think about it. Uh, even down to the colour of the walls for me mm. is important or the types of curtains and colours that I have. And and like I said earlier, I, I need my space to be a vibrant space. And that is so deeply nourishing for me, especially when it's grey outside or I'm having a rough day mm. or like the whole textures are important. So having um, blankets and pillows and you know things that are uplifting and colorful uh, I didn't know that I needed that for the longest time and then when I did it was like the inner expression of me coming out and filling my home and feeling like a, a place where I could take a breath yeah. so where where would somebody where do you help this has I, I just it's such a massively important thing isn't it like I look at your house behind you and from what I can see uh it is colorful and inviting and uh just it makes me feel happy looking at where you're sat you know so I can imagine that you've done you've chosen those things deliberately and created something that feels like that to you is that true yeah and that is the thing is you know there's a, a wonderful quote from William Morris that says don't have any in your home that you do not perceive to be beautiful or of use and I think for me and when I'm working with clients it's about well, what is beauty to you? What's important to you? And like you say, colour is important to you. So portray that. You know, when you walk into somebody's house, you want it to reflect who they are and you get a sense of who they are and how they want you to feel. And in the same way in my home, similar to what you were saying, you know, splashes of colour and, you know, the crazy plant lady, there's plants everywhere. You know, I was talking to somebody recently and they said to me, um, oh, I've got, you know, two or three plants, but I don't know if I've got too many. I went, what, in each room? Or and like, no, in the house. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I've got like five or six just in my bathroom. And they gave me this look that, you know, of kind of, oh, okay, the kind of crazy plant lady. But I don't care. You know, when you can get to that point that is empowering of, you know, if people come into my home and they think I've got too many plants, that's their judgment of what they perceive as what they like, not what I like. And to be in that, to have a space where you can say, well, look, this is me. And, you know, in life in general, and obviously the wonderful work that you do with clients as well, of being able to attract partners and have that relationship where you can go, this is me, all, you know, warts and all, kind of the good bits and the bad bits. Um, you know, there are elements of my house that get chaotic. I've got two children. There's the three of us in the house. 
and the first peak question that people often ask me is, I bet your house is perfect. You know, there's never any mess. And it's like, no, life is chaotic. You know, it's busy there's, with work and school and clubs and interests and things like that. But for me, it's about, it supports us in a way that we can then get it back to calm easier. And that's a lot of what I do with clients of talking about that reset of, you know, if you work from home, resetting it back to family life resetting it from chaos and the children have had friends over or sleepovers and kind of everything just gets turned out to then being able to say but I know where that lives and I can put it away in a you know reasonable time that allows that reset so that it kind of goes from oh my goodness I've had lots of children sleeping over and everything's out everywhere and like oh I can't cope with this to but it's okay and like being able to get that calm back whatever that means you know there's there's um a phrase called visual noise which is one mm -hmm. of the things that I work with clients on of in the same way that if you walked into a room for some people if there was a tv on music playing children playing down in the corner and you know noise outside for some people that would just be noise and it would be like oh they've got the tv on music playing other people would walk in and go, oh my goodness, what, what, what on earth's going on? And I'd be one of those people like, what, what on earth's going on here? Like, do we need the radio on and the TV at the same time? Like you can't possibly hear the both. And that's our level of noise that we can, we can handle. In the same way in our homes with clutter and the things that we have in our homes, we have that element of visual noise. So this is something that we look at as well as looking at how we want to feel in our home of, well, what is our level of visual noise that we can handle? And basically, it just means any kind of random stimulus. So, for example, in a very cluttered house, you might be walking in, as I said, like opening the front door and thinking, oh, my goodness, what's waiting for me? There might be boxes in the hallway that you're judging. Can I get past? Will that fall down? Am I safe? You know, is my toddler safe playing near there or should I get him to play somewhere else? the emotional element comes in of, oh my goodness, why haven't I dealt with those boxes yet? They've been there for months. I meant to take those somewhere or do something with them. In the same way you then walk up the stairs. <laughs> the same way you walk up the stairs and there might be clothes on the, you know, stairs as you go up or children's books and things. And again, you're having that, oh, do I need to do something with this? You know, as well as that emotional element and that's why when I work with clients that coaching element of the mindset as well as the practically what can you do about this is very much a joined up approach because there is always so much of our belief structure and emotions that come into all of this you know as, as I said with the should and the perfection a lot of the women that I work to more work with more so than the men generalizing but mostly the women come up with this is that need of that society pressure that you know mm. for somehow they should be able to keep on top of all of this they should be able to do it all so that all gets dredged up as well as the I just don't know how to do it you know I don't have the time or I just don't know how to organize my life or the home to make it work so that's where me coming in as an independent person that whilst I'm there and I can offer that emotional support, I'm not emotionally tangled in it day to day to be able to offer that kind of outside view of, okay, so everything that you're telling me about what's important to you, how you want to feel, what sort of level of visual noise that you can handle. And again, when you're sharing the home with others, you kind of have to look at what the noise level is for everybody. And then sometimes it's an element of, kind of compromise if you're sharing a bedroom with somebody about okay they can handle this level of noise I you know so you, separate wardrobes is often good for partners <laughs> some people can manage a different level of noise um but it's very much about looking at that and bringing that all together and really getting home to be that place that lifts us up and I'm guessing depending like the the visual noise our ability to um navigate that and what we can allow into our nervous system fluctuates 
to some degree yeah. like it I'm guessing if we're more stressed then the visual noise is shrunk uh if I'm tired we're even smaller oh, oh, yes. and I'm rested and fed and happy <laughs> then it's bigger is that true yeah, it does fluctuate. And yeah, I'm with you on the tired. When I'm tired, I'm like, why is this all out? Like, I can't cope with this. And I just, you know, sometimes the best thing you can do is just have a quick kind of sort around because that whole kind of clear, clear home, clear heart, clear mind, you know, sometimes we just need to do that. You know, same with the dishes and things like that. I, you know, it's just get it done and get it sorted. But it's accepting that things do fluctuate as well. But that's where that that ability to reset that if things have a home and you know you know actually I've been really tired the last few days and I really couldn't you know couldn't really be bothered and often when you hit that tiredness sometimes it's almost like oh I'll do that later like that procrastination mm -hmm. kicks in and then you get to a point where it then hits that noise level that you go oh like why is this all just such a mess and then you don't know what to do with it because it just feels so overwhelming of well where do I start you know I've had clients that have not had people in their home for a couple of years because things are built gradually and then it gets to the point where you start to isolate yourself because you think people will judge you and you know judgment is one of the big things that when people contact me that they say has put them off asking for help because they think that they're going to be judged by others and you know to an extent by me um mm -hmm. and for me that is where that kind of borrowing a little bit of faith of that actually I know that you can't see your way through this right now but let me help guide you through it like I can already see when I first meet somebody and they show me around their house and talk about what's going on for them and you can tell by the words that they use around what things are coming up for them you know the physical impact on people you can tell when they're near even when I do a, like an initial zoom with clients and they're talking about a particular room you can see their shoulders go up or you can literally feel the knots in their stomach where their voice changes about talking about parts of their their home so it's kind of take a little bit of faith that actually I can already see where we can get you to I know you don't believe it but just let me help you sort of guide you down that path I mean, I can imagine one of the biggest blockers uh, I experience with when dealing with emotions generally, which is what you and I do most of the time, isn't it, um, is shame. Shame that I'm here, shame about mental health, shame about how I'm feeling, shame about uh, not feeling like I can cope or keep up or the perfectionism. And the thing is with shame, it if you leave it to fester and don't address it it grows doesn't it and that's where you kind of then start to think that you have to isolate and take yourself away from people and because there's a part of you that just goes oh I couldn't bear to let anybody see this part of me and what I've created like this is the worst part you get an actual physical example of that with people's homes and I get that through the uh, emotional coaching mm -hmm. that I do but it's still there isn't it it's yeah, absolutely it's really, really, really good. so and to I help it is that you know to be able to stand alongside somebody in the same way that you do with the coaching to say you know it's okay and I'm here and if you you know one of the things I always say to people is when they say oh, I think I'm beyond help I'm like the only time you'll be on help is when you don't recognize that you need it and that you're willing to ask for it because actually it doesn't matter how bad your home is or how bad your situation you, you feel it is but actually if you're at that point where you're going I recognize that I want something to change anything is possible right you know it might not be easy there will be times you know when we're going through the physical items in a home you know, people are opening up their whole lives to me when I work with them. You know, if we're dealing with paperwork that you might have sentimental items that bring back childhood memories or, you know, old relationships, especially when you're dealing with bereavements, you know, there's a lot that comes up. So people invite me into all parts of their life and I have that honour and privilege to walk alongside them and say, it's okay, you know, that 
when you need to reach out and know that somebody's there I'm there to help kind of go along that path with you um but if you're ready you know in the same way that if people reach out to you it doesn't matter in a way of how many bad things have happened or how bad that they feel if they want to say actually I want things to be different it is possible but it may bring up you know it's going to bring up really a lot of things along the way that are there to be healed in the same way that if your home is at a more extreme level of clutter there's going to be stuff that comes up as part of that whether that is childhood stuff beliefs you know people pleasing that perfectionism whatever it is but if you have that desire for things to be better and you have the support along the way it really is possible to ha have that feeling of home being home rather than just four wall walls and a roof you know just a house as you're describing your process um not only does it feel like such a tender thing that you offer people in a very nurturing and compassionate way which is just so needed in that moment I, I imagine but it also strikes me that what you're doing is they've come to you and they've identified that they've got a pattern running that isn't working out for them uh, like it's normally a thought pattern that creates an emotional pattern right and they're looping and there's some they're, they're so uncomfortable um, whether that's I, I can imagine there's a scale of discomfort and a scale of whatever it is that they need help with. But it strikes me that you're a circuit breaker. You're somebody who comes in to help them create a different um, outcome for the thought patterns and then helps them to create new thought patterns, thereby almost like helping them to circuit break their own suffering and create a different outcome whatever that suffering looks like whether it's you know a, a, their room that is disorganized or whether it's total hoarding mm -hmm. um really intense shame and all the things that come with it Th that to me the being a circuit breaker is to me the the very definition of freedom and liberation which are no small things right and for you to have that role tell me if this resonates right but if for you to have that role in somebody's life is significant right absolutely and that's why I said earlier you know I have the honor and privilege of being invited into these people's lives because for me it isn't just about you know some people with all the tv programs that are around now they're like oh these people just need to get on with it you know why can't they just sort it out and it's like but there is so much more to it than that. And you're absolutely right. It's about seeing somebody where they are now, understanding where they want to be and what difference they need in their life. Because it's not about how I think their house should be or their, how they should use their time or anything of that. It's about how they want it to be. And then giving them the tools and techniques and support to say, right, I can do this differently. And that's, you know, for me, that's, the greatest thing is actually some clients that I've worked with we've literally done one session and then they're going I feel so empowered to just do this now like it's I, I can do this and that's wonderful like I you know I almost feel like that proud parent of you know watching them go off and take that and say actually I can make a difference to my life some people need more sustained support but we're all different and we've all got a different past and a different story and a different journey that has led us to this point so you know a lot of the people that I work with have had a lot of life thrown at yeah. them um and to have that somebody you know stood alongside that is listening is non-judgmental yeah. and just you know a client recently said to me do you ever really get like annoyed with people you know do they really frustrate you and I was like honestly no because I can see and understand that they've had their own path there and they're asking for help. So how could I get annoyed or frustrated at somebody that 
you know, even clients that I've worked with that we've done some work and then they've fallen back into old patterns. It's exactly that, as you say. It's like, okay, I've caught that. You know, I've noticed that I've done that again, but I've had clients that kind of like, I've literally, I did that and then I recognized I was doing it. So now I'm changing it again. And it's like, well, that's all any of us can do. That, you know, we, we all fall back into old belief structures or old patterns from time to time and sometimes we spot it as it ha happens other times we end up back in that spiral of shame or in that pit of despair where we're kind of we can't find our way out and we can't see the ladder or recognize that there's anybody around and it takes us longer but if we can get to the point where we start to recognize that and then have those tools and techniques and support in place where you can go okay I know we've done a lot of work around this, but I've uh, fallen back into this. It's like, okay, well, we can use that technique and do this, you know, and we just keep going on. It's not a one chance, right? You failed. That's it. You don't get to do this again. It's about that journey of, you know, I often liken organizing and getting kind of our life in a way um, of organizing and kind of those boundaries in place where we can really feel empowered to use our time and our home in the way that we want to as a bit like personal training you know that if you want to be fit and you want to be able to run that 10k or that marathon you don't just wake up one day and go I think I'll go and run a marathon having never done it you know you need to learn how to maybe you know walk around the block then jog around the block and build it up gradually and then sometimes you'll go for a run and go, this is only 5K. Like I normally do 10K. Why can't I even run 5K today? And it just doesn't work and it just feels off. That's the same with, you know, organizing and um, how we are in our homes. That sometimes the best of things just doesn't seem to work. But having that desire to continue going, okay, where am I going today? What can I try? Actually, if I did this differently, what does that work? And accepting that sometimes it may just feel chaotic and there's a factors that go into that. But having something in your toolbox to be able to go, right, I'm going to try that or I'm going to ask for that help and I'm going to carry on rather than just giving up. Exactly. And uh, one of the, the, um, the frameworks that I talk about a lot in my coaching is compounding, which is essentially what I think you're talking about, like taking those micro steps to build upon something rather than feeling that you have to go from zero to a hundred um, and then sustain that um, indefinitely is well the nervous system can't cope that you haven't got the neural pathways to support that physiologically you're not set up to make those big leaps in that way and then keep them going so if we work with the natural way that our bodies are made by creating these new thoughts slowly slowly and compounding they will be then uh, behaviors that you have for life aren't they they are habits and thoughts and uh, behaviors that support you how do you then help somebody when they're in a state of where do you start with somebody when they're in a state of overwhelm yeah I think you know starting somewhere and starting somewhere small so one of the big tips that I always say to people is take that first step. You know, again, like don't think, oh, yeah, I'm going to do the whole house. I'm going to just, you know, this has all got to be done in one day. Everything's got to be fixed. Start somewhere and start to look again, going back to that. How do you want to feel? Where are those pain points in your day or in your home? Where is that? Where do you feel that clench in your stomach? Where? Can you feel your shoulders tighten? Which is the room that you don't want to open the door or when people come around, you try and hide it because you don't want them to see what's really going on. And start there. And, you know, um, I often share a tip on my page about um, setting a timer for like 15, 20 minutes and just starting somewhere. Like I normally suggest putting on some music because for a lot of people that can help kind of quieten that noise down of the kind of oh but I need to do more or why haven't I done this before like just power ballads or something loud that you can kind of sing along to um 
set a timer so that you're going, okay, I'm just doing 15, 20 minutes. And however hard it feels, you're going, but I only have to do 20 minutes because often we're thinking about the enormity of the task ahead of us. And then that reward at the end, you know, it could be actually once I've done this, I'm going to go and cuddle my cat or take my dog for a walk or call my friend. And the more we can start to associate that taking some positive action towards making the change is a good thing rather than an onerous task, the more that we want to do it. I love that. Start small and uh, do something that feels like you've accomplished something, mm. but still. And, and there is an element of rumbling with discomfort when you're doing something new, isn't there? Like it's not, and that is the the beauty of working with people like you, where um, you've got somebody on your side going, come on, we can do it. It's good. And you're positive and you're reinforcing that this is a good thing. Whereas when you, you do it on your own, sometimes it feels like you're just fighting yourself don't you um but when you've got this extra energy that's positive and directing and focused it can feel like okay I can just relax a bit because they're helping me and being directing yeah. and I think having that support you know there's so much that we're distanced from our family people are living further away those support networks aren't in place the media pressure to have it all you know, um, that we can do it all, especially as women, you know, you can have the perfect career, you can be a mother, you know, it's all there for the taking. Well, it really isn't, you know, that it mm. takes some compromise and it takes changes. But I once had a client say to me, oh, I hope you don't mind me saying this. And I'm always intrigued when somebody says something <laughs> like that, because I'm thinking, oh, what's about to be said? And um, <laughs> she said to me, I feel like you're like my professional friend, like I can tell you anything and you'll listen to me, but I don't have to kind of worry about, well, have I said something out of turn or kind of will that come back to haunt me at a party or something like that? You know, that whole opening up to your friends about things. Um, and for me, I was like, well, actually, I feel that's kind of I feel lucky to be called that because actually that is part of my role. Yes, I am there as a coach and yes, I'm there as a professional organiser. But what I really want to do is for people to feel that they are totally seen and supported because that is my role, you know, whether it's organising a room or looking at how they manage their time or putting, you know, getting the family to work together better so that it's not just one person's job to keep the home organised. But it is about seeing them and understanding what they need and being able to help them, as you say, break those circuits and then guide them to a path that might actually give them what they want. Brilliant. I love it. Where would you say that um, would be a really good place for somebody to start if they're feeling overwhelmed at home? I, I know you've already mentioned like um, the room or the place with the, yeah, yeah. With the um, tummy. I would, yeah, I would definitely say, I mean, often the bedroom, just because that importance of sleep, you know, that mm. importance of rest, of just take a look around when you're laying on your bed and you glance around your bedroom. Uh, are there things in there that you can feel those muscles tighten? Or, you know, um, as somebody that's divorced, I had things that when we divorced, that I'd look around and go, oh, I really love that. But it just reminds me that was a wedding present and I it makes me feel uncomfortable. So yeah. it was time to let it go, not because I didn't like it anymore, but because I could feel that clench. So, yeah. you know, in our bedroom, it should be our sanctuary. It should be our place to rest. So, you know, you don't really want work things there. If you're a parent, as I said earlier, you want it to be your space. You know, let it represent you and rest. So, you know, having your work laptop on the bed nightstand is probably not encouraging rest you know mm. having um you know where you've got like the ottoman beds that lift up having that stuffed with other people's stuff or paperwork you're kind of sleeping on top of all the past and unsaid stuff or things that you know that paperwork represents so starting to just look around your bedroom and think about what things are adding to your rest and that feeling of calm and just picking those those things out I think would be a good start but 
predominantly it's looking at where is causing me the most pain you know if it's that kitchen cupboard that you open every day and everything falls out on top of you that's a good place to start because who wants to start their day with things being thrown at them and going there's something else that you haven't done because that's basically what it then makes you feel it's like okay I'm just going to throw myself at you to remind you that you know your life is a mess and that this is yet another example of how you're not keeping on top of things so those pain points whatever it may be um but starting small and then doing something consistently so it might be you know that actually at the end of each day before you go to bed you take 10 minutes to just look around and go what are those things that I can feel like the heckles on the, the back of my neck I go up of like oh they've left that out or why is that all out on you know and thinking about for me it's dishes like I hate dishes being left I, you know even if I'm tired I just have to do them because the time it takes me is less than the impact it has when I get up the following morning and it's like I'm starting the day with something unfinished from the day before and I need that kind of fresh start to wake up and go right what's today going to bring and it's about tuning into what that is for you rather than me saying well that's what you should do and that's part of obviously the joy of working with somebody one-on-one -on -one is that you really get to understand and as I say, when they show me around the home and we're talking about the different rooms, you can tell like the words that they use, their body language. I can tell which areas of that home that we need to start with because it comes across. I love that. Um, is there any final words, any, uh, anything else that you'd like to share? Um, I think the main thing is really to remember that home is home not just a house and to allow it to represent you and what you love and feel about life in general and let that should and that desire for perfection fade away and focus on what is it that I really want and how do I want to feel love that I think um for me, it's also the, and this is, speaks to exactly what you just said, is that feeling of safety. Do, have I created a, a feeling of safety within my home where that no matter what happens on the outside, I can come home and it feels nourishing and mm -hmm. safe and comforting. And that does mean the 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 wash house pile of washing that's staring at me in my bedroom doesn't help that feeling of yeah I'm on top of this this is good <laughs> you know um I, I think it's such an important thing to bring awareness to Louise thank you so much for your time today this has been absolutely nourishing and I adore you oh I forgot to say you were my first ever guest on my podcast <laughs> ever, ever and here and we are again <laughs> We are again so thank you so much for being You're my welcome. first guest and on today and i hope that uh, you will come back again soon thanks dawn thank you louise Bye. take care